welcome to Zenit Integral Academy. This is Kazim, and today we are going to be looking at crank effort diagram, a topic on the mechanics of machine. Please subscribe to my channel and click the like button. Also, press the bell icon for more notification on my next video. So, let's get started. Now, the crank effort diagram, also known as the turning moment diagram, is the graphical representation of the turning moment or crank effort for various positions of the crank. That is, the torque on the crankshaft of an engine will vary considerably throughout its working cycle as a result of the following. This following value of things are taken into consideration. Number one, will vary due to variation in the crank position of the engine. Number two, due to the inertia force on the piston. And the last, which is due to the pressure in the cylinder. Now, the graph of the torque against the crank angle is plotted against each other and we are going to be having this kind of graphical representation when the torque the turning moment is plotted against the crank angle of an engine the crankshaft now we are going to be having this in form of a sinusoidal wave form whereby we have each energy point we have energy points at point a energy points at point b energy points at point c d e to f now this straight line here is known as the thin main line also known as the main resistive torque line and we have each energy level energy level at point a at point b to point f now you need to note that what at the point of intersection of a b c d and f the engine torque and the load are equal so that there is no acceleration or deceleration of the words of the flywheel and this, that is, this simply means that the speed of an engine is either maximum or minimum at this point. So we also need to take note as well that to actually prevent large fluctuation of speed due to the variation in the engine crankshaft stock, a flywheel is usually incorporated as part of the unit of the engine. It ensures that energy is absorbed at the speed of the engine increases and equally discharged at the speed falls. Now, there are some things that we actually need to take into consideration under this topic. Now, we are going to be looking at the maximum fluctuation of speed. Now, the maximum fluctuation of speed is the difference. Now, the maximum fluctuation of speed is the difference between the maximum speed and the minimum speed represented in revolution per minute. We also have, which is known as the coefficient of fluctuation of speed. Coefficient of fluctuation of speed. And this is the difference between the maximum fluctuation of speed. over the mean speed of an engine that is since we know that the maximum fluctuation of speed is n2 minus n1 and for us to have the mean speed of an engine the mean speed of an engine is given by maximum speed plus minimum speed everything all over 2 and from here We'll be having 2 into bracket n2 minus n1, everything all over n2 plus n1. So it means the coefficient of fluctuation of speed, it is usually denoted with alpha. It is represented with alpha and is usually expressed in form of percentage. So my alpha, or known as CS, which means coefficient of fluctuation of speed of an engine, will be equals to 2 into bracket n2 minus n1 all over n2 plus n1. Since this one is in RPM, all over RPM, this we can do this. That means our CS is already represented in percentage. We should try as much as possible to take note of that. Also, when whenever an engine is not fluctuating, that is, it is moving at a steady rate, we are going to be having what we know as coefficient of steadiness. Coefficient of steadiness. Coefficient of steadiness. Denote it word letter M. And coefficient of steadiness is the reciprocal 
of coefficient of fluctuation of speed of an engine y m equals to 1 all over c s or you can as well write 1 all over alpha they are still talking about the same thing that is coefficient of steadiness is the reciprocal of coefficient of fluctuation of speed of an engine and since we know that c n equals to this therefore my coefficient of steadiness would be n2 plus n1 all over 2 into bracket n2 minus n1 this would be my formula for coefficient of steadiness now we said n1 is equals to where rather where n1 equals to minimum spindle speed n2 equals to maximum spindle speed both are represented in rpm revolution per minute and we have our n which is the mean the mean spindle speed where n is equal to the mean speed will be now be what minimum spindle speed plus maximum spindle speed all over 2 here is in form of speed similarly if you are to represent it in form of angular velocity angular velocity that is w my w which is my mean angular velocity will be what minimum angular velocity plus maximum angular velocity all over what all over 2 now recall that we say that a flywheel is always incorporated in an engine so as to reduce or to prevent large fluctuation of speed of an engine and due to that what does the what is the work of the flywheel a flywheel controls the cyclic fluctuation of speed of an engine the fly will control the cyclic fluctuation of speed of an engine so now we are going to be looking at the energy stored in a fly wheel since we know that whenever a body is in motion it undergoes kinetic energy and the kinetic energy is given as half mv square but here on the flywheel, since we are talking about flywheel, a cyclic movement, a cyclic rotation, the M is going to be replaced with I, where I is second moment inertia. Second moment area of inertia. My V, which is denoting my velocity, linear velocity, will be interchanged with W, which is the angular velocity angular velocity now therefore my kinetic energy will now be interchanged will be represented with half i v square and since we say the speed of an engine tends to fluctuate it tends to change that means to for me to now calculate the net kinetic energy now, that is the be the energy that has been fluctuated be will now be equals to maximum kinetic energy minus minimum kinetic energy my b means the fluctuated energy of the fly will be equals to what is my maximum kinetic energy that is since i'm dealing with n1 since my maximum kinetic energy will now be half i v2 square for the maximum minus half i v1 square for the what for the minimum kinetic but don't forget that I told you that my velocity has already been interchanged with W, denoting the angular velocity of the flywheel. So this simply means I'm going to be having half I W2 square minus half I W1 square. So what is common to both? We have my half and my, in, and my second moment of area. Bringing it out, I'm going to be having my BE to be equals to half I into bracket W2 square minus w1 square now we apply what we call difference of two square for the power of the angular velocity difference of two square 
applying the formula for difference of 2 square, we are going to be having my BE to be equals to half I into bracket W2 minus W1, W2 plus W1. This is the difference of 2 square. Then I'll have my BE to be equals to I into bracket W2 minus W1 all over W2 plus W1, everything all over 2. That is bringing these two down to the, towards this end here. I'm going to be having this. Then from here, we'll be having BE to be equals to I into bracket W2 minus W1. And this here, that is the maximum angular velocity plus minimum angular velocity all over 2 has already been explained earlier to give us the mean angular velocity. That is a bigger W without any subscripts of 1 or 2 representing and denoting the mean angular velocity. Also recall that we said earlier that my mean angular velocity sorry we said earlier that my alpha the definition of fluctuation of speed is the difference between my what maximum speed minus minimum speed that is w2 minus w1 all over mean speed on cross multiplication here we're going to be having alpha w to be equals to w2 minus w1 as earlier x so if alpha w equals to w2 minus w1 anywhere we see w2 minus w1 we'll replace it with alpha w so my be will now be equals to i alpha w dot w so be will be equals to i alpha w squared so this is the formula for the fluctuated energy it is a five star general so we've been able to generate this is a sister, rather. <laughs> so we've been able to generate that the fluctuated energy of the flyway is represented by I alpha W square, where our I is denoting the second area moment of inertia, and my I is represented as m k square what is your mass the unit of mass is in kilogram and units of k that is k is denoting radius of gyration of the flywheel and k is in radius which is in meter so i'll be having meter square so the unit for my i second moment of reaction is kilogram meter square and we know what alpha alpha is what coefficient of fluctuation of speed which is in always represented in percentage we have my w which is my angular speed or my angular velocity and w equals to 2 pi n all over 60 where my n is the what is the mean spindle speed is the mean spindle speed represented in revolution per minute and we have my b b is given as the coefficient of fluctuation of energy coefficient of fluctuation of energy and my e is given as the energy input to the flyway or you said the work done per cycle or you said the work done per cycle which is always in Newton meter so now we are going to be talking about the different values different values of I because my eye, which is the second moment area of inertia of the flyway, is going to be affected depending on the type of flyway we are actually working at. The values of I, since we said I is equals to mk squared, my mass multiplied by my radius of gyration of the flyway, this is the first formula for I. The next formula for I, I told you we have different type of objects. We have the hollow object 
or you call it hollow flywheel and we have solid flywheel so this formula is going to be affected either hollow flywheel or solid flywheel we have different formulas for i for the two a hollow object is a object that has both internal diameter internal diameter external diameter and with a thickness why for a solid flyway solid fly will only have one diameter it cannot pass it through just a diameter just bigger d it does not have internal hole and an external but it has a thickness as well but for hollow flyway it has both internal diameter external diameter with a thickness so now and this is going to be affected by formulas for i so my first formula for i is i equals to m k square which is also the same thing as m r square the next formula for i will be m d square all over 8 since i'm only having one d then this is the formula for a what for a solid flywheel we have another one, which is the i equals to m into bracket outer diameter plus inner diameter square everything all over 8 this is for hollow fly we now another one we need to take note is if density is given in the question if density is given in the question and we have thickness to be given in the question our formulas for i would tend to pi density thickness t raised to power 4 all over 32 this is in case for a solid flywheel and we also have i equals to pi density thickness internal external diameter raised to power 4 minus internal diameter raised to power 4 everything all over 32 this is for a hollow flywheel don't forget, if in the question we are giving both internal diameter and external diameter, then definitely we are going to be applying the formula for hollow flywheel for high for second area. But if we are giving only one diameter, then we are going to be applying the formula for solid flywheel. So another formula for high that we have is R equals to 2 pi density area R raised to power 3. All these formulas are applied based on the question. So it's either we are giving a solid flywheel, it's not going to be stated directly that you are working with a solid flywheel, but it's just going to be asked directly based on the parameters you are giving. That's when you will know the type of height that you are going to apply. So in the next tutorial video, I'm going to be looking at different models, different model that we have on CED. We have five different models. So in the next video, we are going to be looking at model number one and model number two. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful day.